find and follow your own trail to stay on your own path be aware of yourself and surroundings trust that you find your way and don't hold yourself responsible for the trails or trials of others sabrina moyle my guest has been quite the trailblazer and has been breaking new barriers year on year she was born to Ghanaian parents, Reverend Dr. Apianda Arthur and Abba Arthur in Middletown, Connecticut. In 1999, she graduated from the Wesleyan University with a degree in English and African American Studies. After college, she worked at advertising agencies Arnold Worldwide and Spike Lee's Spike DDB. She also worked at the fashion brand Ashley Stewart, where she was the Vice President of Marketing. She later became a senior marketing manager of Pepsi and also spurred music festival based marketing as head of music and entertainment. She remained with the company for almost a decade before joining Beats Music in 2014 when Jimmy Lovin of Beats recruited her. Beats was also purchased shortly thereafter by Apple and she became the head of global consumer marketing for iTunes and Apple Music. Then in June 2017, she became chief brand officer at Uber. In June 2018, she left Uber to join Endeavor as chief marketing officer. Netflix named my guest as new chief marketing officer in June 30, 2020, making her the third CMO for the company in 2019 to 2020. She was the first black C-level executive at Netflix. She replaced Jackie Lee Joe, who left the company for personal reasons. Bozoma St. John started a new role in August 2020 and departed in March 2022. Her glittering career also snowballed into philanthropic efforts like Pencils of Promise Global Ambassador to Ghana and also serving on the board of Girls Who Code and Vital Voices. In May last year, she was inducted into the American Marketing Association, Marketing Hall of Fame. My guest is none else than Bozoma St. John, American Ghanaian philanthropist, top tier marketing trailblazer, and also an accomplished business person. She's here on Star Charts. Star Chart is probably brought to you by MTN everywhere you go. Haptel, everything in you. Tabia Takum, Core Plus Mixture, and also GCB Bank. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome to Star Chart. And of course, we say welcome to our trailblazing guests, top tier marketer. Bozoma St. John. Welcome, Bozoma. Thank you so much. And I, I love it. your outfit. Made in Thank Ghana? Thank you. Made in Ghana by Belinda Beidou. Top Belinda model. Belinda Beidou. Top yes, model. Yes, that's right. Well, fantastic. You know what? <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us here on Star Chat. And I can see that your ring back to Ghana is quite profound in the last five years. Yes. What's getting you to come back for more and yes. more of Ghana, Bozoma? Well, um, first of all, I love being home. So I can't imagine staying away for too long. Mm. The next is that, you know, as a marketer, one of the jobs that I've taken pro bono is how to market Ghana to the rest of the world. Oh, so you're not getting paid for the job that no, you do? No, no, not at Interesting. all. Interesting. No, never, never. Wow. The job I do is to help to elevate mm. what we have. You know, the, um, I feel like the responsibility of successful leaders is to give back. And my give back is to the culture that I am born from. That and is so, interesting. Yeah. And, and I know that it was very much influenced by the year of return. Yeah. How has this changed your perspective about your ancestral roots, Bozoma? Um, well, I think it's very important to recognize who you are. You know, the, um, I can't deny the fact that I was raised in the U.S. I can't deny the fact that I am also Ghanaian. Right. And so both of those things put me in a unique position to straddle the world. You know, so that diasporans who are looking for a way back can trust me, mm. you know, mm. because they know I understand where they come from. And your people back home also. Also trust me because I can also speak the language, I eat the food, and I know, they know I won't disrespect the culture. I love that. Talking about the language. So yeah. you speak tree a lot? Fanti. That is a Fanti. 
You know, the first thing I have when I come home is yeah. Wache. Oh, you love Wache. Wache it makes the two watch of us. So oh, you love good. Wache, right? And the leaf. It has to be original. Oh, so you don't want it in the park and all of that? that no, is not... no, 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 no. It has to be fresh in the in the leaf. And you but are you a do... good cook yourself? Yes. I'm the I think eldest... I've seen some videos of you yes, in the kitchen yes. trying to cook for I'm the daughter. I'm the eldest of four daughters. And my mother had us in the kitchen mm. cooking Ghanaian food. Well, I don't so which know, one, I don't which one do you to... cook best? Oh, what do I cook best? Hey, this is a hard one. It's like made everything up. I think maybe my palm nut soup, ground nut soup is my best. Wow. Oh. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I mean, with all yeah. the glitz and glam, I didn't know that you can also <laughs> ditch the shoes and everything and go out there to the kitchen to yes, cook. Yes, that's right. That's right. You know, speaking of your roots, how far back have you traced your, you know, family history or genealogy? Oh, yeah. What intriguing details did you unravel? Well, you know what's funny? I have not done like any of the 23andMe or Ancestry.com or anything Oh, you like not? That. No, 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 no. Because I kind of feel like, oh, I know I'm Ghanaian. Mm. My dad is from Izama. My mom is a hunter. You know, grew mm. up in Sagandi Takwadi area, but pure West Indian, pure Western <laughs> girl. So there's really nothing for me to trace. Right. You know. <laughs> Interesting. So for the Western region, like they say, the best comes from the West. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. Absolutely. No. Right. So safe to say that you identify more as a Ghanaian than an American, or? I think I represent both, honestly, mm, mm, because mm. for me, the um, idea that when I'm in Ghana, there are certain things about me that are inherently. American. Mm. You know that some people see me and be like, oh, she's not from here. You know, I can't tell you how many people, when I respond to them in Fanti, will be like, oh, let me there, Kafanto. I'm like, yeah, I, I speak the language. And you do it and with then, such fineness. You know, <laughs> it's, 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 it's sweet and, uh, in, in the, yes. in the year, and, yes. and, and then it flows and, on the tongue for right, you. Right, exactly. But then mm. when I'm in America, somebody will hear my name and say, oh, where are you from? Mm. You know, so I feel very much like I don't belong in either. And so I've made it my own to belong to both. And, and that is what leads me to my next question, that do you feel a sense of lost identity or mm. caught in the mix because mm. sometimes you want to feel a lot more Ghanaian than American. Yeah. Sometimes where it suits you, you're American more than yeah. Ghanaian. Yeah. Do, do you have that battle going on in your mind sometimes? You know, I used, to. When, oh, I was, used to. when I was younger, I absolutely struggled with identity because I never felt complete in mm. either. You know, I always felt like an outsider in both worlds. Um, if I would come with my parents to visit Ghana, people would only speak English to me or treat me as if I didn't belong. Uh, when I was in America, people would make fun of my name or ask me like to go back home or whatever. And so it never felt like both. But now I recognize that's a superpower. Right. You know, I can go in between the worlds and be very comfortable in both. And totally accepted, right? Oh, absolutely. Yes. You, you talked about your name and, that, and your roots as well. I, I want to follow up with that. Bozoma St. John. Really? I mean, that's not Ghanaian if you ask me. Where's the St. John from? St. John is my married name. Ah, right. Yes. And, and Bozoma? Bozoma is in his money. It is. What does it mean? Yeah. It doesn't have a meaning. It's a family name. So, you know, Bozoma Efiba. Mamichi. Bozoma Efiba. Okay. Mamichi. Because right. I was named after my father's mother. As the first girl. Right. So Bozuma is an Izuma name. It's an Izuma name. So now that you pronounce it, So I, other I Izuma it. people Bo will know. Bo Bozuma? Yeah. Bozuma or Ezuma. So people say Bozuma and no, all no, of no, that. No, no, no. Bozuma. <laughs> Bozuma. 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 That's Bozuma. a Ghanaian pronunciation. Wow. Yes. Wow. wow. And I read in your biography that your formative years, between six months and 12 years, you spent quite some time here in Ghana, of course, yes. in Africa as well. Yes. What was life back then? Walk us through growing up in Ghana, yes. Bozuma. Yes. Well, I went to register school. Oh, that's around the corner. Uh, yes, okay. right around the corner. Um, in fact, one of my oldest and dearest friends who lives in Connecticut, we went to class five together at Rich Search at Tobernasco. Right. And um, I have several friends like that. Um, Ajwa Mugrabi, gosh, Azda. Like, there were so many friends from that time period that even when I left to go to the U.S., I mean, I was only, we graduated class six. Mm. They went on to secondary school, and then I went to the U.S. We stayed in touch. Right. You know, through letters, whatever. And then later on, Facebook allowed us to remain friends. And then as adults, we reconnected. You know, so it has been for me um, a choice mm. to remain connected, not just through family.
but through friends. I think that's most important. So growing up in Ghana back then, walk us through, you know, yeah. those years. How was it like? I mean, schooling in Ghana, yeah. which neighborhood did you get yeah. to grow up in? And all? Yeah, we lived in cantonments. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, like I said, we went to Rich Church School. Actually, I started Morning Star and then went to Rich Church. Um, but time then, it was the late 80s, mm. you know, and um, I think Ghana was a great place to be. You know, I have wonderful memories from that it time. It was under the military rule. Was there yes. any way you experienced curfew or, you know, back then, some no. riots? No. No, no. Mm. My experience with the military rule was actually when my father's government was overthrown. My oh, father your father was in politics? was in the member of parliament in, in Hila Liman's government. Ah. That's how we left Ghana in the first place. So you went on exile? Yes. And then returned to, Ni um, to Nairobi, Kenya because, you know, we wanted to come back to Ghana. My dad is a Pan-Africanist. He loves Africa. And so he didn't want to stay abroad. I mean, he's the kind of guy that when he left Ghana to go to school in the U.S., as soon as his degrees were done, I was six months old, we moved back to Ghana wow. immediately. And he taught at Legon, and then he joined government, uh, and then the coup happened, and then so he your, had to your, leave. your dad was Dr. Arthur, right? Yes, PhDs. Wow. PhD, doctors. wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What, what, what kind of dad... Is he and your mom as well? Let's get to meet your parents because <laughs> they've given us such a gem and we oh, need to celebrate them. Yes, oh, we celebrate them all the time. So in your fact, dad grew up in Takradi and also in My the dad US? grew up in, in Zama. In Zama, um, okay. Yes, and then moved to Takradi when he was a little older, but um, he went to university in the U.S. Okay. Uh, met my mom at that time. My mom grew up in Sagandi Takradi also in Tema. Mm. And so, um, you know, both of them decided to start their family in the U.S., but that was only for convenience of education. Right. They really wanted to live in Ghana. Uh, but with the coup and everything else, they had to leave. Mm. So by the time we circled back around into the late 80s, you know, it was safer for us to be here. Um, but at the time, as everybody knows, you know, opportunities were limited. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. And so they decided to then, okay, by force, relocate back to the U.S. to give us the opportunity to have some other education and other opportunities. So when I became an adult, it wasn't a far-fetched idea for me to return to mm, Ghana. Mm, you know, mm. it had never been so far away that I felt that I couldn't connect. It always been right there. You could have chosen your dad's path. I mean, as an educationist, a lecturer yeah. and all of that. Were you at any point influenced or maybe coerced to get into the field of academia? <laughs> Very much so. Very much so. I Tell us if, about well, it. Well, mm. if my dad would have gotten his way, first of all, I'd be probably a double PhD like him, oh. um, or I'd be a doctor, maybe a lawyer. One mm. of my sisters is a lawyer, so she took care of that for us. <laughs> you know, but um, the creative space was not a, a space that either of them thought I would have success in, right? I think when you're a parent, you want to set up your children for the biggest success possible. Mm -hmm. And in the creative fields, I mean, really, like, what is the likelihood that your child becomes successful that way at least if they're a doctor you know that oh right they're going to be successful because doctors are successful mm -hmm. but i think it's very difficult for a parent of a creative to see the future and so even now with all my success my dad will sometimes still? throw in there he's like oh it's not too late you know to <laughs> get your still PhD. pushing for still you to get your phd to get PhD. are you considering that no not at all <laughs> So you were talked out of it yes. in getting to the creative space. Yes, that's Did right. Did you rebel or you thought that your dad at the point understood that, oh, let it slide? No, he never understood. Never? <laughs> Being no. the first girl, I think that he was also worried that the yes. father you chose it. Yes. So then what is it? You could have chosen any field of endeavor, but you decided to go, you know, into that level of mastery. Yeah. Why did you choose marketing, Bozono? Yeah. Well, you know, I think some of it is um, divine intervention, a destiny in that I didn't plan on going into marketing. Okay. I needed a job to pay bills, to sustain myself, because, you know, my parents weren't going to pay my bills. Right. And so I, after college, I moved to New York City, and I got a job as an assistant. To And it ha so happened that, again, this is divine intervention, that it was for Spike Lee um, at oh, his you advertising You worked with Spike agency. Lee? Yes. Mm, okay. So he was my first boss. I interviewed him, uh, I think, uh, eight months ago. Yes, and talked about very the much. Yeah, very yes, much. he came for Kamala Harris. So you were an assistant to Spike yes, Lee. Spike Lee. And, um, you know, through that experience, I rose through the ranks in his agency and um, discovered that marketing and advertising, which were an offshoot off of his di directing business, uh, was a space that I excelled in. 
It was something that I found came easily to me and that I had talent in. So Bozoma, for the records, you didn't study marketing. You didn't no. go to the university to study that. No. That is gracious and divine. Yes. So you're blessed. Amen. I am blessed. Wow. You learned on the job. Yes, absolutely. We'll talk about some of the marketing principles and all of that. But for me, I look at the brands that you've represented, from Pepsi to mm -hmm. Uber to mm -hmm. Beats, yeah. you know, Apple, Netflix, Endeavor. That's diverse. I mean, brand profiles, if you, if you ask me. Yeah. How did you adapt and excel in every outfit? Let, let's talk about landing the Uber job. How did yeah. that happen? <laughs> Well, I mean, to go back a little bit, mm. I think the most important thing to remember for anyone who is in any kind of field, it doesn't matter what you do, mm. your excellence at that work is what is important. And so for me, oftentimes people will say, oh, but you've had so many jobs in so many different industries. In fact, the Washington Post wrote an article about me two years ago saying I'd worked nine jobs in like six industries. Like, how does she do it? Because the thing is that for me, it doesn't matter if it's tech, if it's consumer packaged goods, if it is automotive, if it is music, mm. if it is film, mm. I am an excellent marketer. So I can sell anything. So the key word is to go in for excellence. That's correct. Excellence in the work that you do. Mm. So if you're an excellent writer, you should be able to write along any industry. If you're an excellent chef, you should be able to make any food. If you're an excellent hairstylist, you should be able to wear, use any hair type to do your styles. My point is that be excellent in your chosen field, and then you can float in between the different companies and the different industries with no problem. Food for thought, and I think that this is the biggest takeaway for me, you know, from this interview, that be the best in everything Correct. that you do. Excellence in your is the Excellence. It's what we're looking it, for. It, it is. So that is how you adapt. Yes. Let's look at some of the marketing principles universally, what are some of the things that one is know? I mean, despite your geographical location, yeah. what is this? It's a global village now, like we say. Yes. What are we to look out for if we want to stand out in the marketing? Yes, well, again, I think, you know, being a perfectionist of your craft is really important. For me, the whole central anchor of marketing is a love of people. Mm a love of culture, understanding people. And so without loving people, there's no way to be an excellent marketer because I need to understand what it is that you want mm -hmm. in order to be able to sell you yes. what I want. You know, if I don't think that you are interested in, you know, music or sport or fashion or any number of pop culture avenues, I'm not going to be able to convince you to do anything. Right. And so having a great curiosity for people's likes, dislikes, the things that are happening in the moment, being relevant to the time. I can't talk to you about something that happened two years ago and try to convince you to buy something today. And so that's what marketing really is. Your, your energy is, is just over the roof. <laughs> and, and, and that is what it is. I mean, you to me. I mean, I come to you and I, I, I feel positive energy. Yes. You're always in the vibe. You're positive about what you do and what you say. Still on the Uber thing, you're telling us about how you landed that job. Were yes. you coached? You were with Pepsi then. I was with Apple, actually. Apple? Yeah. And then Uber came for you. Well, here's the thing. I mean, part of the idea of curiosity and being the best at what you do is that you can look at any situation and say, oh, I have a thought for that thing. So I was sitting comfortably in my offices at Apple, and I saw Uber was having some trouble. You know, at the time, they were the golden child of Silicon Valley. And then all of a sudden, they started to tank. They started to face some real hardship, criticism from around the world. And I called Ariana Huffington, who's a friend, and she sat on the board of Uber at the time, and I said, Ariana, I have some ideas for how Uber can get out of this mess. But I had a full-time job. I was not looking to become the chief marketing officer Oh, of you're Uber. looking to be a consultant or maybe somebody just no, helped. No, not ideas. even a consultant. I said, oh, this is an interesting thing. I have, I'm naturally curious. Ah. And so I said, I have some ideas. Let me know who I should talk to, and I'll give them some thoughts. For free? Yeah. And she wow. said... You should talk to Travis Kalanick, who's the founder and creator of Uber. So she, said, she organized lunch at her, at her home. I went for lunch with Travis. And what was supposed to be an hour lunch turned into an eight-hour working session. <laughs> and again, I think this is part of what I think sometimes is misunderstanding about how to become successful in mm. the work you do. Mm. I would do this job for free. Absolutely, 100%. I do it for free a lot. You know, an interview now, just some minutes, I've just picked up some salient points that yeah. be 
excellent at what you do, but again, also be passionate and yes. do it for free. Don't think, don't put money first, Correct. which is what is the order of the day now in the world that we're in. Many right. young people want the money first. Right. How much are you pay me? What am I getting? Before they give up their best. Correct. Is, is, is it's that not, not that it's not way. That. Okay. I'm not saying you should do anything for free because listen, I am very well paid mm. in the jobs that I do. Right. However, I am curious about the work I do. I want to continue to raise the bar for myself on how I do it. And so my call to Travis mm. about Uber was simply because I was like, I do my job at Apple really well. I am very well compensated there. I want to give you some ideas just because I happen to be curious about the thing you're doing. And in eight hours, he made me the offer at the end. He was like, can you please come work for me? And I said, ah. The Don Colleone offer, an offer you couldn't refuse. Well, I refused it at first because I said I have a really good job at Apple. Oh, you turned out the Uber job the first yeah, you don't call. I have a job. I'm, I'm, do, I'm doing this because I like to, not because I need a job. Right. And then he brought the offer I couldn't refuse. <laughs> <laughs> so from Apple to Uber. Yeah. And that was it. Then Netflix came calling. Yes. Or with Netflix also, you saw a problem and you had a solution. What was it? Well, in that case, we were just a few months into the pandemic. Okay. And the usership of the product was going through the roof. Mm. And they had seen the work that I'd done at several companies and understood that I liked to connect pop culture with product. Right. And they said, well, how can we better connect our film, TV properties with a consumer who is stuck at home and we want them to choose Netflix first. Right. And so they came to me with that question. So that was before the pandemic? Right in the middle of the pandemic. Okay. At the beginning, actually. June mm. 2020. And um, at that time, I thought, wow, that's a really, really big job because a global CMO job, you know, Netflix is in over 100 countries right. um, with lots and lots of subscribers. So I, um, against lots of advice to take a big job in the middle of a pandemic, I said, ah, oh, this sounds good. I'm going to do it. What drives you? Because like you're saying, you had a very comfortable job, well paid. Yeah. But here you were in the middle of the pandemic saying that I'll take this risk yes. and go and make a difference. Yes. What drives you, Bozuma? I want to be the best. I want to be the absolute best at what I do. Mm -hmm. I refuse to be just comfortable in my success. You know, I think that most successful leaders will tell you that. That, um, you know, you think, oh, let me get to the top of the mountain. Well, I've been to the top of the mountain on a few mountains. And I'll tell you what happens when you get to the tell top us. of the mountain. Because mm -hmm. lots of people are climbing, thinking, oh my gosh, how do I get to the top? How do I become successful? How do I become the C-suite? How do I get paid a lot of money? Mm. When you get to the top of the mountain, you see another mountain that is higher. So get down off your mountain and go wow. to that one. Wow. And that's what I continue to do. And so at some point, I want to climb the highest mountain there is. Mm. And then I'm going to go to space. Oh, you want to? <laughs> What's been your toughest assignment, you know, in enhancing yeah. the value of a brand? You've yeah. worked with Pepsi, Netflix, Endeavor, Uber, yeah. Apple. Oh. Which one has been the toughest for you? Man, there, there's a challenge everywhere, mm. always. You know, I, I find that, again, that is part of what continues to grow me. Mm. Because I can tell you a myriad of problems at every company I've been at. You know, when I joined Apple, um, it was the beginning of streaming. It mm. hadn't yet been created at Apple. So I was working at Beats Music. And we were only three months old and Apple came knocking because iTunes, of course, was the big monster in the world. And knowing that streaming was going to come and was going to become the predominant way for people to listen to music, they needed a way to do that and to market it. And people didn't know what to do with streaming. And so that job was very difficult because you had to explain to people that you pay one price and you can listen to all the music in the world. Meanwhile, they were still going to record stores to buy music right. mm. or maybe download one song off of iTunes. So when you try to change a mentality, it's a very difficult thing to do. I would even say that the pro bono work I do on behalf of Ghana is very difficult because think about the culture in which I grew up in the late 80s, early 90s, where every image of Africa was UNICEF or these images Refugees of, and oh, war -torn my zones. goodness, with... If, starving children children yes flies on their eyes they were telling you oh pay one cent a day and you can feed a child for a month it was disgusting 
And so how, how do, do you, you change that narrative, Bozuma? Oh my goodness. You've done an amazing job. Thank you. Yes, but it's, yeah. it's personal to me. That's what I'm telling you is that the passion that you're hearing from me is because I want it to be different from my daughter. I don't want her to grow up in a world where people disrespect Africa, where people don't recognize the beauty of what we have. And I know that marketing is a solution, right. you know? And so for me, it's like one of the ways that you change it is by elevating the excitement that we have here. And so even though I am very proud of the global work mm. that this current administration has done with making sure policy has changed, mm. making sure that declarations are made, like that's a global network, right? But for me, it's like, how do I make sure that Ghanaian artists, right. music artists are elevated? that they're played on the playlist. Exactly. How do I make sure that people understand that our food is not strange? It's actually delicious. How do I make sure that when New Year's Eve shows up, you don't want to be in Times Square. You're jealous that you're not in Accra because all your favorite celebrities are here and having the time of their lives. Bozoma, you're just brilliant and outstanding. And, you know, I always yeah. say that the time with you exudes some positive vibes always. And, and with this said, I think that the president of Ghana should look at honoring you. You <laughs> deserve a national award Thank with you. all the things that you've done. And I, and I mean I it, hand to heart, you. that you've done an amazing job that you need to be commended. And of course, we won't, especially you. doing it, you know, for free. Yes. It, 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 it's something that we need to commend and salute you for. Thank you. Going, you know, around that, what do you think makes a brand more durable? You've yeah. curated a lot of stuff. People yeah. look up to you. People feel, well, it's easy. I can do what she's doing. She's beautiful. <laughs> she talks well. That's yeah. all there is to it. But tell yeah. us, what are the elements that we have to, for it to transcend beyond generations? Yes. So this is one of my favorite questions, mm -hmm. right? Because you think about how um, certain brands re represent a whole category. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if people say, I want a Kleenex, Usually you're talking about yeah, tissue. Yeah. Or I want to Xerox. You're talking about making a copy. Yeah. But those are brands. Xerox is Just, a specific yeah, yeah. brand. People talk about toothpaste and they took Pepsi then. So uh, correct. But you're talking about toothpaste. toothpaste. <laughs> it can be any, <laughs> yeah, any kind right, of brand yeah. of toothpaste. But you say, I want mm -hmm. Pepsi then. Mm -hmm. Those are brands that represent a whole right. industry. And the way that you do that, and this again is sometimes a misunderstanding, mm -hmm. is that it's not linear. Right. You don't say one plus one equals two. Yeah. Sometimes it's three times six equals 28, you know, because you have to drop seeds of inspiration along the way. And the way that brands transcend time, mm. space, legacy, is that the people have to believe it was their own idea. It is not me telling you yeah. that you should use Pepsodent. It is me telling you that like, oh, your breath is gonna be fresher. Your teeth are going to be whiter. whiter. Right. You know, this is going to become healthier mm -hmm. for your mouth. And then all of a sudden, one day you're going to wake up and you're going to be like, the only thing I use is wow. Because it's going to make me a healthier person. So there's an emotional appeal as well. You Correct. get into their minds and their That's state. Right. That's right. And even, like I'll circle it back to Ghana, the seeds that I'm dropping, that I've been dropping for the last seven years, mm. have been so that the next generation of people who are rising my daughter's generation right. will consider Ghana like they consider Paris, like they consider San Tropez. They're not going to think of Accra as this wild place where they need to be careful to go. It will become aspirational for them. And, and, and talking about that, you've done it so well. I, I saw 31st what you did with the, you know, watch night and, you know, countdown yes. service and what first time seeing dinner being held under the black star, you know, yes. square, the arch. And I was yes. like, this is amazing because Paris does that. Yes. You go to Dubai and they're actually doing that, you know, yes. at the Birch. And you, yes. you go to New York Times Square. Yes. So Accra, for the first time, and you should see the tweets and the videos that people yes. are sharing yes. from the Independence Square. Yes. That was amazing. I think it's just amazing that we have this. There are not many places in the world, mm. cities that have monuments that can be recognized globally. Black Star Square needs to be one of them. I like that. We have to do it. There's it's no reason why it can't put be. A monument and you know, oh, this is Paris. Correct. This is New York. When you see the Eiffel Tower, yes. oh, that's Paris. Paris yeah. You see the Statue, Statue of Liberty, of Liberty. <laughs> that's New York. 
Correct. You know what I mean? Like, there's mm. no reason, and this is, again, why I'm so passionate about this. Mm. We think that it's going to take so much work. Oh, it's impossible for people to recognize Black Star Square mm. and say, oh, that's Ghana. I know that's Accra. It is possible. It's we just possible. have to recognize that it takes our effort over time, mm. over excitement, over passion mm. in order to make that happen. And talking about possibilities, you earlier mentioned Afrobeats, our music from Ghana. You yeah. are there. You are with the high and mighty, yes. you know, the big names. Mm -hmm. How can we get our music to transcend our borders? Yes, we're pushing, we're trying. Yeah. But you are with the, with, 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 the, with the people who call the shots. Yeah. How can you change that narrative for us? Well, I say this all the time, which is that it really begins with us. Mm. We have to celebrate ourselves. Look, I'll tell you the truth, okay? Mm. When we were looking at the menu, even for the dinner that you're talking about, right. When I first looked at it, there was garlic bread being offered on the menu. I had a fit. I started screaming. I was like, oh, now where's the killer wheelie? Why would we serve garlic bread when we're in Ghana? It's the same thing for our music artists, for the clothes we wear. Why are, we, why are you wearing Gucci when you can wear Belinda Beidou? Why are you eating shrimp scampi when you should be eating fufu? Why are you listening, no disrespect to Jay-Z, why are you listening to Jay-Z when you should be listening to Shatawale? Why? We have to celebrate ourselves. So it starts with us. It starts with us. Do you think Ghanaians celebrate one another? I would hope so. But it's not the case. It's not the case always. I would like to transform that. And again, I think that um, certainly when you see outsiders celebrating, mm. it makes it easier well, to feel too, like, yeah. oh, you know what? They appreciate what I'm doing. Right. But I want us to have the same passion. So it starts with us. Starts we're, with we're going us. for a short break. When we come back, we're wrapping up this great interview with Bozuma, but it's right here on Star Chat. We'll be right back. Find and follow your own trail. To stay on your own path, be aware of yourself and surroundings. Trust that you'll find your way and don't hold yourself responsible for the trails or trials of others. Sabrina Moyle. My guest has been quite the trailblazer and has been breaking new barriers year on year. She was born to Ghanaian parents, Reverend Dr. Apianda Arthur and Abba Arthur in Middletown, Connecticut. In 1999, she graduated from the Wesleyan University with a degree in English and African American Studies. After college, she worked at advertising agencies Arnold Worldwide and Spike Lee's Spike DDB. She also worked at the fashion brand Ashley Stewart, where she was the Vice President of Marketing. She later became a Senior Marketing Manager of Pepsi and also Spurred Music Festival based marketing as head of music and entertainment. She remained with the company for almost a decade before joining Beats Music in 2014 when Jimmy Lovin of Beats recruited her. Beats was also purchased shortly thereafter by Apple and she became the head of global consumer marketing for iTunes and Apple Music. Then in June 2017, she became Chief Brand Officer at Uber. In June 2018, she left Uber to join Endeavor as Chief Marketing Officer. Netflix named my guest as new Chief Marketing Officer in June 30, 2020, making her the third CMO for the company in 2019 to 2020. She was the first black C-level executive at Netflix. She replaced Jackie Lee Joe who left the company for personal reasons. Bozoma St. John started a new role in August 2020 and departed in March 2022. Her glittering career also snowballed into philanthropic efforts 
like Pencils of Promise Global Ambassador to Ghana, and also serving on the board of Girls Who Code and Vital Voices. In May last year, she was inducted into the American Marketing Association, Marketing Hall of Fame. My guest is none else than Bozoma St. John, American Ghanaian philanthropist, top tier marketing trailblazer, and also an accomplished business person. Let's Right, so you're welcome back. My name is Bola Ray, and you are on Star Chat, right here on Star 103.5 FM. We're also live in Kumasi on Ultimate FM. In Takradi, you're listening to us on Empire 102.7 FM, and we're around the world on starfm.com.gh. Carrying multiple phones around can be such a chore. You know, the badge in your pocket, the extra weight in your purse, the stress of switching from one phone to the other. And that's why MTN eSIM is here for all of us. Now imagine being able to switch between different numbers on the same phone easily and seamlessly. Guess what? You can go seamless with MTN eSIM and enjoy the convenience of connecting multiple phones, yes, onto one single phone. And that's Sketchy MTN eSIM. It's easy. And also to check your device if it's compatible, simply dial star hash zero six hash that star hash zero six hash once and you receive your eid number mtn everywhere you go sometimes buying your car insurance isn't the problem it is when you forget to renew it and then you get into trouble with the police or an accident and that's why i'm introducing you to haptail haptail car insurance it is instant and it's now on haptail get your instant car insurance sticker anytime no long things. Just install the Haptel app. Enter your car number for an instant insurance sticker. Haptel is everything you. Do you know that MTN Momo now has an app? Yes, MTN Momo has a brand new app specially designed to make your Momo experience easier, convenient, and faster. Just download the Momo app on Play Store or App Store on your smartphone and look out for your blue and yellow icon. It's that simple. So go out there, there's the MTN Momo app, just install it. And it allows you to view your statements, get to pay your bills, and so much more. It's only from MTN, everywhere you go. I guess it's the ever brilliant, and of course, versatile, Bozoma St. John. Bozoma, welcome back. Thank you so much. Fantastic. So we're, we're just on our music and what we create, and not just yeah. the music, you also actually had to go into the direction of our food and yes. our clothes. I've been one advocate to say that, look, flights that are coming into Ghana, whether from, you know, London, whether British Airways, whether Delta, mm -hmm. can we have some Ghanaian food at least, that experience? You mentioned Kele Wule. Yes. We can have it on, Wachi, yeah. something. Is it something that we should push in this year? That let's have that so that we can plant yeah. in chips. Yeah. Jollof rice. Yes. You know what? This, actually, this is such a good point because I also want to talk about language. That's right. Now, when I board a flight from Los Angeles to Paris, mm -hmm. The flight attendant comes on, gives an instruction in English, and then gives an instruction in French. Does that happen when I board a Delta flight to Accra? No, it doesn't. Why is that? We need to enforce these type of things. And for me, it's really important that, again, we're the ones who demand these things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's like, look, we, want, we look outside and we say, oh, why didn't they do that? Why didn't they do this? Why didn't they do that? Well, I don't want to put the blame anywhere. I want us to feel empowered enough to say, no, we appreciate ourselves so much. We are so proud of our culture that we're going to demand it. There's no way that I'm going to get on a flight and not eat my jollof. In fact, this is a true story, okay? Are you okay? My mother lives in Los Angeles, very near, close to me. When I'm boarding a flight, especially a long one, she packs me a lunch. Really? The lunch has jollof. <laughs> a little bit of chicken stew. Probably some fried plantain. You take Ghana Maybe some with Ghana way. salad on the side. Yeah. Oh, and when they come around to give me, you know, a snack or whatever, I'm like, hey, can you just give me a napkin? That's I don't right. need any of your food. I've got my own. <laughs> you know? So let's encourage that. that. That's a real life situation. You're yeah, sharing. and I'll put it on Instagram. Whoa. And I'll say, look at me enjoying my Ghanaian lunch. But my point is that, like, mm. 
And it, you know, it's a little bit of a joke, but it's a little bit serious too, which is that I am very intentional, you know, with the way that I am. And so even on 31st night, when I have designers who like to dress me, mm. you know, the world's biggest designers, but I came and I went to Mimi Yaboa and I said, I need a dress, a gown. And this woman spun up gold. Wow. She put Dinkra symbols that, was an amazing that were dangling dress. off of my dress. Yeah. There were Dinkra symbols in my hair. You know, we have to be intentional you with how we represent. the path. And that is why for some people I go on social media and say, oh, she's arrogant. Oh, she's, she looks down on people. She did this. I said, no, you don't know this woman. No. Down to earth. She's yeah. very, you know, kind. Because you don't want to interact. Like, I like what you said. You're very intentional. Yes. And it rubs in the face of others. They feel yeah. that, oh, by doing that, oh, who is she and all of that. Do you get that? And how does that yeah. make you feel? And how do you navigate it? Well, it used to bother me a lot. You know, I felt yeah. that I had to always defend myself. When people say, oh, you know, all she wants to do is show off or, yeah. you know, she's doing things her way and she's not following the rules and all this. And I said, well, you know, I don't think there's been any revolutionaries who have ever obeyed rules. It's not easy to break rules. It's not easy for people to criticize you. Right. You know, and the truth of the matter is that being who I am, being the first in a lot of places, shattering the glass ceiling, means that there isn't somebody for me to follow. That's right. My hope is that by doing what I've done, other people will see me and say, oh, she's real. If she did it, I can do it. When I walk into a boardroom and I'm wearing something like this, people say, oh my gosh, there's a scandal. She should have been wearing a gray suit. <laughs> I'm not gonna wear a gray suit. Right. I'm gonna wear a loud color. I'm probably gonna dress very femme, which means a certain thing, you I know? know? I know. Showing right. off the assets. I don't mind. You don't have a problem with uh -uh, it at all. Not at all. Wow. And if you want to complain and call me scandalous, do it. This we love to see. My, and you get the work, attention, you get the word My back. work speaks mm -hmm. for itself. I love that. And so at the end of the day, it doesn't matter it, what lipstick I'm wearing, how I did my hair, <laughs> if you can see my cleavage or not, my work is superior. Oh, what a word and what a woman. <laughs> interesting, interesting stuff. And talk about our music as well. I want to give us your top five Afrobeats. Oh, tunes. That would be gosh. what? I mean, in no particular hey, order. The tunes. Yes. Man, this is a tough one, you know. Right. So, your top five would be what? Celebrate right now. Celebrate. Is one of my top Is it the ones. one from uh, Pato Ranking? No. Which it's, one? It's um, Celebrate Kwame something. Oh. oh. Kwesi Atha. Kwesi Atha. Yes. Thank you. Kwesi okay. Atha. Yes, 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 yes. That's right. Celebrate. Um, okay. Own it. I know my producer loves that as well. Fine. Oh. He plays that every morning. Does he? So. I celebrate. love that song. Kwesi Atha. Yes. Okay, Own one. it by Stormzy. Stormzy. Okay, on it. Mm, okay. Let's see. Oh, um, Jackie, uh, Nyame something. It's such a beautiful. Is it Jackie? Yes. Sunbed. Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. I'm right. a Ray. I'm a Ray. I was also. just listening to her. All right. I was floating down the river, uh, the Volta River. Right. On the first, and uh, listening to her. some Amma Ray was mm. beautiful. Ah, yeah, that's so you, it. You I'm gonna go four. there. So the last one. Oh, what? the last one. Let me think. I'll <laughs> give. I'll give a Nigerian a little love. How about that? <laughs> Why not? Um, essence. Yeah. Essence. There okay. You go. Okay. Thames. Uh, okay. We'll, give, we'll give them one, one slot <laughs> in the five. Interesting. <laughs> so that's it for Afrobeats. And look, 2024, we're all going to push. I'm not happy that Afrobeats has gotten a, a category and, you yes. know, getting some nominations. That's right. Other than the Grammys and all that's of right. that. It's a huge one. Yes. And I think we need to push for, for, for that and for more. So yes. What, yes. What, what exactly. do you make of that? I mean, making a great show in, out there, not in an international category, but we have. A category for yes, yes. Mm. Well, look again, but this is why intentionality is so important. Harvey Mason, yes, who's the CEO of the Grammys, yes. yeah, came to Ghana because he has seen over the last five years how exciting it is. Correct. When I saw him like six years ago, and he said, "Oh, I just saw you were in Ghana because Grammys are in February." I was there on behalf of Apple Music. Mm. What were you doing? It looked, it looked like everybody was there. I was like, "Harvey, you need to come." It took another three years, but he came. he came. Right. And when he came, he was at Twist. <laughs> yeah. He was at From Back. That's right. And he, so now, he sat at, yes. at Republic. Republic. He yeah. went and ate at Instituto. Mm. He did all of the things. And so that is how you influence people to create new change. Mm. I know you've tried your hands at some businesses in Ghana. I mean, yeah. Cabo Coastal, you, you, you did that. Yeah. What made it work and not work? Oh, my goodness. Well... My workshop, is that what you mean? Mm -hmm. 
I think that um, it was a surprise to me, if I can be totally honest with you. Really? Well, because I've never done it in person before. In person, right. It's always been online. Right. So online, I have 11,000 people who join mm. from 80 countries. The group chat, you know, on the live feed is going fast. People are checking in from Brazil, checking in from Canada, you know. And so I didn't know what it would be like if I did it live and live. in person. And so when I decided to do it here in Ghana, because to me it felt like if I'm going to do it live in person for the very first time, mm -hmm. it has to be on this soil. And I wasn't sure how it was going to be. But let me tell you. It turned out great. What? The response. I've seen the, the videos that put together. It was analysis. huge. Wow. And the energy in the room was unbelievable. Do you feel a sense of fulfillment knowing that you're giving back to, oh. you know, young ladies out there? Absolutely. Especially Ghanaian women. Absolutely. Because I cannot be the only one. Mm. I, I refuse to be the only one. Right. And the only way to do that is to share what I've learned. Because, you know, people always say, I want you to learn from my mistakes. Right. I think that's stupid. Why should people learn from mistakes? Mm. You should learn from success. And so, so if don't I've learn been, from mistakes, no. learn from success. Correct. Mm. If I've been successful, why am I not going to tell you how to be successful? I don't want to tell you that, like, oh, you know, I made this mistake. Don't do that. Why? That makes you discouraged. That makes you fearful. And, and, and just try to touch down. What's the craziest yeah. or naughtiest thing that you've ever done? Hey! Yes. Why not? In it's my life? In your life. <laughs> what would that? I mean, as a teenager, as a grown-up woman. Well, let me tell craziest? you. I've, yeah. I've always been very interested in pop culture, we said. Right. So in my very strict Ghanaian household mm. where I grew up, with my father being a reverend mm. and my mother being a very strict Ghanaian mom, I would sneak out of the house and go to the club go party with my friends. But I have to say that that paid off. Really? Because I got to meet a lot of artists that way. <laughs> I understood culture very much that way. Right. And I'm a successful person because I I love that. Certainly, your first date, you remember? Hey, yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to tell it. <laughs> first heartbreak? Oh, too many to count. Oh, too many? I've been heartbroken. Oh, too bad. Well, maybe God will give me love in 2024. Oh, 22, I see that in your eyes, and I think Thank that is you. coming. That is a man out there who's <laughs> going to come for you. You're Amen. ready to get, you were married for how many years? Ten years. Ten years. Yes. And then Sally, your husband, he passed. passed. Yes. But you're not ready to settle. I'm ready. Let's Are you ready it. for a man? Are you looking for a Ghanaian man, or you don't really care? I would love a Ghanaian man. Oh, you love a Ghanaian man? Yes. What's your spec like? Somebody watching and Exactly. You're right. Intelligent. Mm. Loves God. That's right. Faithful and will love my child like I do. That's all. Oh, isn't that sweet? You know what? <laughs> it's been an interesting sit down with you. Thank you. I wish that I would have gone for an hour, but hey, we love what we've gotten right here. Thank Great content, so and we wish you the very best. That continue to be loving, continue to be oh. affable, spread the love, and do that, you know, for Ghana. Everywhere you go, you're I a great ambassador. Thank and we you salute so you. much. Thank you very much, Bazuma. It's been such a pleasure. So you look into this camera and give yes. you know the world a message. Yes. 2024. What is Which Bozuma telling us? Looking into? So this camera is yours. This one. That's right. Okay. So for 2024, I want every Ghanaian to celebrate Ghana in some capacity. Share it with a friend. Do the things that you love to do in Ghana and celebrate them big. Let people be jealous that they're not here doing it with you. And if you're in the diaspora, I want you to celebrate Ghana there. We shouldn't just try to assimilate into other cultures. We should bring our culture there and make them assimilate to us. What a word. It's been great <laughs> right here on Star Chat. Thank you for doing the listening and also for watching. To my production team, you're the best in the world. My name is Kwabna Anoche Adisi Bolare. God bless us all. Thank you.